Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video on manual torpedo solutions and using the TDC. I have toned down the realism for this video just to take a more instructional approach to what all these dials really mean and how to use it in sort of a, a realistic way, like in a realistic engagement. So I'll just start by going briefly through each of these dials, what, what they do, and for this for this demonstration, I'm going to turn manual input on. So moving around the periscope is not going to affect these dials. This is going to be totally, totally manual. Um, we're going to be firing at this guy here, British Coastal Freighter. And uh, yeah, again, for the entirety of this video, for these purposes, I'm going to have this off. So. Your manual input tick should be to the right if you're going to use this method. Um, if you do know what you're doing, you're going to want to have manual input tick to the left, but uh, I'll, I'll just get right into it here. So basically what I'm wanting to do is set up a torpedo solution for before this guy crosses my zero. Okay, So I've got a line set up of his course. He's, he's moving southwest, I'm looking northwest. So at some point, he's going to cross right in front of me. And at that point, that's when I'm going to fire the torpedo to, uh, to hit this guy. So I basically need to pick a bearing from zero to, you know, wherever um, that I'm going to want him to cross. Your bearing dial right here is just the bearing that your target is at relative to you. So if I want to shoot when he's at, oh, I don't know, 20 degrees on this compass wheel here. I'll make a line from me to 20 degrees relative bearing, like that. Okay, and I will change bearing on this dial to 20, because that's, that's where we're gonna be looking. <coughs> I'll even turn my periscope to 20 degrees bearing just so I can see when he crosses it. And that's what we're set up for. Okay, now the method we're going to be doing to uh, calculate his speed is just going to be based off the map info here. Actually, I don't know if we have enough time. I'll, I'll start that right now. Uh, make an X. Start that. Okay, so I've made a line of his course. We've kind of been tracking where he is. And this doesn't have to be totally exact, but it has to be pretty accurate. Um, this is the line of where he's gonna be. Now, when you're at 20 degrees bearing, we wanna know what the angle on bow is going to be at that bearing. So at 20 degrees, there's a line for how we see 20 degrees. We wanna know, um, basically what angle the target ship needs to look when he crosses this 20 degree bearing line to see us, okay? So when the ship is right, right here, what angle and what direction does he need to look at to find us? So we're gonna take our protractor, make a line from us to the 20 degree bearing intersection of his course right there, and then continue it along his course like that and we're getting 69 degrees, nice. I'm just gonna call that 70. But basically what that's saying is when the ship gets to right here, 20 degrees, um, he needs to look 70 degrees to port, okay? To the left to see us. So we're gonna set that here. This left side of the dial is port, the right side is starboard. Okay, and we're actually running out of time really quick. So I'm just gonna quickly estimate his speed here. Um, okay, going about eight knots maybe. So the speed dial is the target speed. The range is just going to be from us to that line, one kilometer. And yeah, I guess we'll we'll fire away here. You can hit this. Uh, we'll just fire one tube, I guess. Okay, 
So I'm going to press Q to open the tube. So we've got our range set to 1 kilometer, bearing 20, angle on bow, 7 degrees to port, speed 8 knots. I mean, I don't know if the speed's right, but I, I just wanted to show you how inputting all of this uh, will work. Tube is open. And again, this torpedo solution is only good for 20 bearings, so I can't move the periscope around. I'm just waiting for whatever I want to hit to cross that 20 mark, and I'll press fire uh, whenever it does. So we'll just go for like the center of the ship here. Now, this line on the map is where the torpedo is going to go. So we have our bearing set to 20. And uh, you'll notice the line's at 5 degrees. That's the gyro angle. So according to this info that we put in, bearing 20, AOB 70 degrees, and speed 8 knots, um, the TDC is accounting for all that info and pointing the straight run torpedo in the direction that it needs to go to hit that ship. So it's saying at that range, when he was one kilometer away at 20 degree relative bearing, it'll take the torpedo a minute and one second to get there. So as you can see, it's following along that path. And uh, I really hope I estimated the speed properly. I kind of just, it's seven or eight knots, I think. Go take a look here. Uh, I think Torpedo Okay, he was probably going seven knots. We hit him right on the bow. Yeah. So, that's that's basically how it goes. You can see if I if I change the speed, if I corrected that to seven knots, you can see this line's changing. So the slower the speed is on here, it's basically just following this line. It's tracing this line that we gave. So the information we put into the TDC is basically giving it the information of this this line of the course of the ship. And as we change the speed, we're changing one variable at a time. It's just tracing that line, as you can see here. Um, the only difference is where we have to point the torpedo and how long it'll take to get there. So if he was further away, it actually wouldn't change the torpedo solution at all. So if, if he was going seven knots and say, it, when we made this shot, he was like, I don't know, three kilometers away. Um, our gyro angle here is looking at about six degrees, but if I extend that to three kilometers, you'll see that the line is still at six degrees. So range really doesn't matter. The biggest thing is speed and angle on bow. Um, now, once you have that set up, like we, we set up the, the torpedo solution for 20 degrees bearing and 70 degree angle on bow. Um, once you have all that in there, you can turn this dial to the left. Oh, just a minute, I should actually... Yeah, we're looking at 20 degrees, okay. So now, now that I've uh, ticked this dial to the left, it's going to account for that. So if I look at zero, straight ahead, I've moved our periscope 20 degrees to the left. Um, you can see the angle on bow has now moved from 70 to 90. If I move to 45 degrees, the periscope, the angle on bow is now at 45 degrees to port. Some other things you might want to look at in the TDC over here on the torpedo tubes are depth, uh, speed setting of the torpedo, magnetic or impact, and then uh, tube selection and spread angle. So um, one thing to keep in mind is Okay, we've got kind of a variety of torpedoes here. So the G7A, you can see here, it's got a range of 5 to 7.5 to 12.5 and a speed of four, 44 to 40 to 30 knots. And these just depend on the uh, speed setting. So if I change this to fast, um, that that's it has a lower range and a higher speed. So if I look at the G7A, um, on the fast setting, it goes 44 knots and its range is 5 kilometers. On its slowest setting, 
the torpedo goes 30 knots and it has a max range of 12.5 kilometers. Uh, so only the G7As can change their speed settings, but it, it's a pretty big increase in speed compared to the G7Es. So they only go, like they go 30 knots, G7As go about 50% faster on the fast setting. So basically all this dial does here is it changes the G7A from slow moving with long range to fast moving with short range. And on the G7Es, you'll notice you can't change these because they only have one speed setting. Uh, they only have a five kilometer range and they're always going 30 knots. Now the depth setting here, um, usually you want to hit, like the guy we hit has a draft of 7.3 meters, which I believe that means the bottom of his hull is 7.3 meters under the surface of the water when he's like fully loaded and moving. Um, maybe it's lower when they're fully mo loaded, I don't know. but. Basically, just know that the bottom of his ship is about 7.3 meters under the water. So, <clears throat> if you want to hit that with a torpedo, um, you could hit it like the lower you hit, the more flooding and more damage typically. So, maybe you want to set your torpedo to 4.5 meters because you know he's over 7 meters uh, deep on his draft there. But the biggest thing to know about torpedo depth settings is. Uh, it, it complements your pistol, your, detona your detonator. So uh, the I here means impact. That means when the torpedo physically hits something, it'll blow up. And the M is a uh, magnetic detonator. So that means as the torpedo gets close to the, the metal, hu metal hull of the ship, the magnetic influence of the ship will set off the torpedo. So really what you want to do when you're using magnetic pistols is get the torpedo right underneath the keel of the ship, underneath the bottom of the ship. So you don't even want to hit it. You want to get the torpedo directly under the hull and then it blows up. And that'll actually do the most damage possible. Um, you can sink just about any ship in the game with a single torpedo if you use magnetic pistols and get it to go off right underneath the ship. But it's really finicky, it can be hard to do. A lot of the torpedoes have depth keeping issues. Um, rougher seas will mess with that a little bit, the way the ships bob around, and sometimes they'll go up prematurely. So it's safest to just use impact pistols at three to four meter depth. But if I wanted to be a sweaty tryhard and like get my torpedo to blow up right underneath this guy, I would set my pistol to magnetic. I'd set my depth to about uh, seven, sorry, 8.2-ish. And hopefully that would go off about a meter underneath the ship and take them out in one shot. Now for salvos, um, you can hit this S. So this T and S means tube or a salvo. And we just fired a single tube, but we could fire a salvo if we were if we wanted to hit a ship with three torpedoes at once, or four, or two. Um, if I hit this two, three right here, that means I'm selecting tubes two and three. And now we've got to worry about this spread angle dial here. So as you can see, um, we've got two lines now. And if I set the spread angle to nothing, it's basically just shooting in a straight line like we did with our first torpedo. But if I set the spread angle to one degree, you'll see the line kind of separates. So when you're hitting a, a longer ship with multiple torpedoes, you want to hit in different areas to cause more damage and more flooding to send it down. So that's really all spread angle does. Usually it's only going to be about half a degree, maybe a full degree, depending on how long the shot is. But you can, you can eyeball it. I mean, you can play with that. You've got the line moving in real time to show you where the torpedoes will go. If you're firing all your tubes, well, in this case, I've got... Do I have an option with all four? Oh, right there. Um, yeah, so like if you're firing all four torpedoes, you can kind of play with that and see how the spread angle will change their path. <laughs> Um, the gyro angle, you can't can't really manually change any of this. This is just for angle tracking if you don't have your input on. 